Hello everyone. So in continuation with the previous video on basics of embedded system, today we will, we will discuss the classification of embedded system, the architecture of embedded system and design metric of embedded system. So in classification, embedded system is classified into two types as shown in figure based on performance and functional requirements. It is further divided into four types, standalone, real time, network and mobile embedded system. While based on performance of the microcontroller, it is divided into three types, small scale, medium scale and sophisticated embedded system. The table shows the classification of embedded system with their examples. Based on performance and function requirements, we have real-time embedded system, standalone embedded system, then network embedded system and mobile embedded system. Real-time embedded system performs the task in real time and they must give quick responses under critical situations. It is further divided into two types, soft real-time embedded system and hard real-time embedded system. In soft real-time embedded system, no time bound operation is required. For example, a microwave oven. So there is no strict cooking time instruction. In hard real time embedded system, a strictly time bound operation is required. For example, traffic light control. Standalone embedded systems processes analog or digital input signals into digital output. They are less complex and they are independent of any system. For example, calculator, microwaves. Network embedded system operate through a network interface. Communication to network happens through LAN, WAN or other communication protocols. They may be wired or wireless. For example, ATM machine. Mobile embedded systems are small and portable. They work on a restricted memory space and they are constantly evolving to get into a miniature model. For example, digital camera. Based on performance of microcontroller, the embedded systems can be divided into small scale, medium scale and sophisticated embedded system. In small scale, the controllers used may be of 8 bit or 16 bit in medium 16 bit or 32 bit and in sophisticated the controllers can be of 32 or 62 4 bit small scale embedded system can perform simple task medium scale they perform medium to complex level task while while sophisticated embedded system perform a complex task and also the complexity of hardware and software is very high. The different tools used to develop these small scale, medium scale and sophisticated embedded systems are editor, cross assembler, assembler and integrated development environment that is IDE. High level languages are also used to develop these embedded systems like Java, C, C++. In sophisticated embedded systems, a real-time operating system is also used. Now, figure shows the layer software architecture of embedded system. So at the bottom, we have a hardware layer. On the top of that, we have hardware abstraction layer, which consists of bootloader, board support packages, device drivers, then OS layer, operating system layer. On the top of OS layer, there is a system service layer which consists of file system, GUI, task management. And at the top of this layered software architecture, there is application layer. So operating system layer, OS is a software system for uniformly managing hardware resources. Different services provided by the OS are scheduling, file synchronization, networking, embedded OS available in the market like embedded Linux, Windows, VX, VXWorks, Android, and Ubuntu. 
the application implements the system functionality and business logic and the applications use api system schedule provided by the os to interact with the os figure shows the hardware architecture of embedded system it consists of central processing unit input devices output devices memories like ram rom communication interfaces for example uart ethernet can lan and application specific circuitry so central processing unit used in embedded system can be of three types it can be microcontrollers it can be microprocessors or it can be a data signal processor microcontrollers they are available in market with different word lengths such as 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit and 64 bit microprocessors are also available in the market with a different word length like 4 bit 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit or 64 bit and dsp processors uh, two significant features of dsps are multiple access memory architectures and fast multiple accumulate units in short called mac memories they are used to store instructions and data rom ram flash memory cache memory etc are used in embedded system input devices they can be a ergonomic device such as keyboard mouse or touch screen output devices the output may be in the form of sound light or a record or a file for a database communication interface used to communicate with peripherals with other embedded systems intra device communication for example uart spi i2c and inter device communication protocols can be used as can wi-fi ethernet usb bluetooth 